Thanks for checking out this episode of Should You Read? Uh, I know in previous episodes I was saying what number this is. Doesn't matter. I'm going to stop that. So, it's just extra. But anyway, this is Should You Read Lock and Key? So, right off the bat, anyone who wants to just hear it and then turn this off, yes. 100% yes. So much yes. You should read Lock and Key, the comic book. It's by IDW, and it is awesome. So the last one I did was for uh, Saga by Image, and I really, really, really highly rated that one. Uh, I gave that a 5 out of 5 stars. <clears throat> this one, also 5 out of 5 stars. I'm giving that up front because it's that good. I would even put that a bit ahead of Saga. Saga is awesome, amazing, 5 stars. Lock and Key is also awesome, amazing, 5 stars. If there was more to give, I would give it past the 5 stars for Lock and Key. Really, really good. The creativity, like I said with Saga, same thing. Creativity with this is great. Um, it's, it's realistic to a degree, and what I mean is it's kind of set in like a real world. It's a fictitious place, but it's a real world type thing. And then things start to get weird and kind of supernatural, and you know you'll see if you read it. Uh, and then, but you, but it fits, but it goes well. So there are some properties, like whether it be movie or comic or whatever, where it kind of sets up the world and it's kind of like real world. And then you start getting into weirder things and more supernatural things. And then you're like, uh, this seems out of nowhere. Or this doesn't really feel like it fits. But with lock and key, it totally fits. Uh, and it's so it's such an enjoyable ride. Uh, the art artwork is really awesome. It's not like it's it's very clean the way it's drawn. It's a tad bit on the cartoony ish side for the especially with the way the characters look. Uh, it's more of like a drawing style where like the facial features and everything are more um, sharp, you know, instead of having like more rounded features, they're like a little more angular. Um, so. I, I didn't l like love that art style to start out with, but as I kept reading, I just got used to it, and I was like, yeah, this is actually a really good art style. And especially for the story, uh, I felt like it fit pretty, pretty well. Um, really cool story, really intense story, doesn't a shy away from much. Um, there's, I don't think there's any actual nudity in it, but there is uh, plenty of profanity, there's gore, there are certain things that come up in the story where you're like, oh, they're going to shy away from this. They're not actually going to do this. But they do it, and they show it, and there's some really intense stuff in it, and the storyline is really awesome. Joe Hill is the person who did the storyline. Now, if people don't know, Joe Hill is actually Stephen King's son. Um, so I think his original name was Joe um, King. But he went with Joe Hill because he wanted to become a writer on his own terms. He didn't want people to be like, oh, you're Stephen King's son. We should totally give you a book deal or a comic book deal or whatever. He wanted to do it on his own, and that was kept secret for a while. I think it was something like 10 years into his career as Joe Hill before the information got out. And he was kind of like, yeah, I feel safe that I can tell people right now since I already made it. Like, I'm Stephen King's son. Surprise. And people were like, oh, shit. Well, this makes more sense now. So... If you like Stephen King, he's got some of the same stuff story-wise that he does, but Lock and Key, I mean, like the name says, there are keys involved, and it's a delight whenever these keys are found, because each key does something different, and it, it's just fun to be like, all right, what's the next key going to be? Where are they, Where's it going to be found, and what's it going to do, and how's it going to tie into the story? Because everything ties in, and it's awesome. This one I've actually read all the way through. I le le read, bleh, sorry, read the first two volumes on Comixology through their unlimited service, and then I had a friend who actually owned the other uh, volumes and lent them to me. It is finite. There are only six volumes, so this is not one where you're like, oh, if I get into it, I'm just going to have to keep buying and keep buying and keep buying, and it's, it, there will be no end in sight, and I'll just keep spending money. No, there are only six issues. And it is phenomenal. It is such a good storyline. The artwork is really good. The dialogue is really well done. And the characters are really pretty realistic. They're very real characters. They're very flawed characters. And it keeps them interesting. And it keeps them so that you can understand them and you can feel for them. Um, so I don't think I had any characters in it where I was just like, I don't like that character. That character sucks. They were all at least like, well, 
that makes sense. Two, I really like this character. But anyway, uh, Lock and Key, big, big, big recommend. Five stars, awesome, a must, honestly, if you like comics and if you haven't read it already, which a lot of people may have already read it because it's been out for a bit. I was late to the party. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for checking this out. Go check out Lock and Key if you haven't. If you have any recommendations, just shoot me an email. BrutalBattlePodcast at gmail.com. Uh, brutal, B-R-E-W-T-A-L. Um, but until next time, thank you so much, and keep it brutal.